returning to Kashmir. It's not just the incarnations of Mardurga that are revered there. Kashmir has always been a centre for learning, and hence there are also many, many sacred sites dedicated to Mart Saraswati. Many of Bharat's most exceptional people came from Kashmir. Let me tell you about a few of them. In the 6th to 5th century BC, Paniniji was a Kashmiri grammarian who wrote the Ashtadhyaya, a treaty on the science of phonetics of Sanskrit grammar, setting the linguistic standards for classical Sanskrit. With its 3,494 rules, the grammar in Ashtadhyaya has been likened to the Turing machine, an idealized mathematical model that reduces the logical structure of any computing device to its essentials. A paper published in the scientific journal NeuroImage by neuroscientists and language experts at Harvard, Columbia, and Trenta University reported unprecedented increase in brain gray matter density, literally brain power, in individuals versed in Sanskrit shlokas, as measured with MRI. In some areas of the brain, gray matter density was almost 40% greater than in controls. Charakaji was another significant individual from Kashmir. In the third century BC, he was the first physician to present the concepts of metabolism, digestion, immunity, and germs. He promoted the idea that prevention is always better than cure, and that health and diseases are not predetermined, but a consequence of lifestyle and effort. Things we all really appreciate today's world. He revitalized and refreshed the 8th century BC encyclopedic treaty on Ayurveda to create the standard medical literature used across Bharat and most of the Middle East for the next 2,000 years. <laughs> most people don't realize that so many of the world's mathematical and scientific discoveries were first made in Bharat. The British, with their white supremacist beliefs, developed a strategy to eradicate Bharat's indigenous culture, to convert Bharatiyas into obedient Indians who would serve their purpose. This strategy proved very successful, allowing Britain to steal the equivalent of 37 trillion pounds of Bharat's wealth, plunging Bharat into poverty, and at the same time making it the mainstream belief that everything worth discovering had first been discovered in the West. The colonial narrative continues to dominate the world today. Gravity was first discovered by Newton in the 17th century, right? Wrong. Indian astronomer Brahma Gupta first proposed it in the 7th century. The mathematical rule governing the orbits of the solar system's planets was first discovered by Kepler in the 17th century, right? Wrong. Elliptical orbits and accurate heliocentric periods were first proposed by Ayabhata in 499 AD. Ellipse equations by Mahavira in 850 AD. Uniform mean planetary motion and instantaneous velocity by Bhaskara in 1150. And the first unified model for inner and outer planets by Nila Kanta in the 16th century. The Kerala School of Mathematics are actually the people who discovered many critical mathematical functions that we now know of as Taylor's series, or that we credit to Euler. But in fact, in some ways, the colonial narrative is stronger in India's education system than in the West's. I was shocked to learn that my husband, who's from India, he learned in great detail about Plato, Socrates and Western philosophers, and yet I, in a British school, didn't learn anything about any of that. At the same time, he learned nothing about any Hindu kings or about any of the Hindus or heroines throughout Bharat's glorious history. For example, Raja Lalita Ditya, a Kashmiri king who created an empire spanning 
from Assam to Afghanistan and from Tibet to Gujarat in the 12th century, or Rani Bida, a Kashmiri queen who in the 11th century created a kingdom that was so stable, so prosperous, and built hundreds of temples. She is credited with delaying Muslim invasion in Kashmir by decades, even after her death because she left behind a legacy of such a strong army that Mahmud of Ghanzi's army was decimated on the two occasions that he tried to conquer the region. Unfortunately, an exaggerated version of the Western education system is still being taught to Indian children today and still dictates the literature emerging from Bharat's academic institutions. I say exaggerated because it is largely under the control of communists people who are anti-national security, anti-growth, and anti-Hindu. Minority schools enjoy reduced taxes and scholarship privileges, but Aatya children are taught to glorify and feel thankful to the very invaders who raped, pillaged, and murdered their ancestors. There's no two ways about it. This madness has to stop. Until Bharatiyas understand their history, and feel pride in their culture, their civilization, and themselves, how on earth can Bharat attain its full potential to become the Vishva guru that shows the world how to live sustainably, healthily, and using the full potential of the human mind and spirit? There's no doubt, as I said, that Modi ji is doing an excellent, excellent job to create a stronger, a more powerful, and a united Bharat. I really hope that overhauling the Indian education system is high on his agenda.